Welcome everybody to the party! I want to do something a little fun. So, I'm going to talk about how to photograph insects while I cook dinner. Chill? Let's do it. So first off, we're going to start with some bugs. I found these around my house. This one I found actually outside and I brought it up to my room. And there's a, a couple dead ones in here. So, um... We're just gonna photograph some of these dead bugs. Oh, cool, yeah, I got him out. Oh, he's like caught in hair and stuff. You know, see custom, custom bug tray. Oh, sh shoot, I dropped it. Walk, 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 walk. Oh no, I left my macro lens. Walk, 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 walk. Okay, so I got my, my lens cleaner here and I don't know how this happened, but there's dust underneath this filter. No idea how that happened. A good thing to have, I'd say particularly for macro photography, is to have this, so like a UV filter. So it's just a clear piece of glass. But when you're doing macro photography, you tend to get very, very close to your subject. So sometimes you hit the front of your lens on whatever you might be taking a photo of. So it adds a protective layer from the actual camera lens itself, and I think that's extremely important. You know, when I'm sitting in a, a bush hunting down some, hunting down some beetles, um, you know, sometimes I get too close and I, and I do, I hit the front lens element on whatever I'm taking a photo of. So this is a good protective layer and they're pretty cheap. That being said, this is the macro lens that I use. It's a Canon EFS 60mm f2.8. There it is, sorry, f2.8. Yeah! So 60mm means that it's a bit of a zoom lens, but the best macro lenses are easily, you know, 100 or more millimeters. And that means you can be farther away from the subject while still getting the photo up close, essentially. Um, so this means I have to be quite close to the, to the subject in order to get, you know, a pretty good macro shot. So this is a regular wide angle lens set to 18 millimeters. And yep, that's as close as I can get with the things in focus. You know, here's a good scale. There's my, there's my finger. So let's pull on the macro lens and see how close we can get. So there we go. There's a start. This is kind of where it was at before, right? So let's go ahead and let's get up in it. There we go. Just an incredible difference. Like, look at the detail. You just, it, it doesn't compete. Very cool, huh? So I'm going to take some photos of these guys. Hopefully I can get, let's try to get something like, oh, like a funny scene. Got the little bug right in here. And I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get him on this Eiffel Tower to look like he's climbing it like a giant bug. But in the process, oh, I just dropped him in the sink, no! There's what we're looking at. So here it is on the Eiffel Tower. The most challenging part about filming insects is that the, if the camera shakes even the slightest bit, you just, you, it's vibrating. So I'm, my camera's even on the table, so I'm not even hand holding it really, and I'm still just, ah, uh, it's, it's unbelievably hard. Hmm. Let's get some photos. So, uh, let's go ahead and add that beetle in. <laughs> so cool! So... Ladies and gentlemen, I do not know how long I've been talking and how long I have not been recording. <laughs> oh no! So I have now it finally positioned on the Eiffel Tower. And I want to talk a little bit about why I believe that macro photography is probably the hardest form of photography. Now, this is my humble opinion. I'm not an extrovert photographer. I don't do this for a profession. I've never been formally trained. I've never taken a class on photography. I'm 100% self-taught, self-employed, yada, 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 yada. What I'm trying to say is that you can take portrait photographs with your iPhone, especially with some of the software that's out there today that can give you the nice background blur without having a great lens, you know, like you need on a DSLR. You can take uh, landscape shots on your cell phone and you don't need a good camera or a good lens. You know, or some people will notice the difference and there is a difference. Cell phones have not caught up to big cameras. It hasn't happened. Um, but to be fair, I, you know, many phones can shoot in 4K video. I cannot with this camera. And this is the Canon 80D. 
right? If you know anything about cameras, it's a very popular videoing camera, and it doesn't even shoot 4K. It's unbelievable. But macro photography, you can't do this on a cell phone. You can't get this type, let's see how close I can get. You can't get this type of definition just by zooming in on your cell phone. It's not gonna happen, right? You need a good lens, or you need um, a good filter that can magnify the image, or you need a camera that shoots extremely high megapixels. You can do some post-production zooming on it, or you need extension tubes. But in addition, when you're taking photos of these bugs, depth of field is so shallow that if the bug doesn't happen to be in that little frame, then your photo is gonna be horrible. It's just gonna be a blur, right? And I've taken many, 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 photos of just blurry bugs because they haven't been in that focus plane. And that's really frustrating. So I say, you know, when I take a hundred photos of insects, I maybe keep five of them. So what I have to do is I have to take a bunch of photos of the same subject and then I have to go home, I have to download the images to my computer, and then I have to just weed through them all and say, not in focus, not in focus, not in focus, not in focus. Okay, this one looks pretty good, I'll save it. Okay, this one looks okay, not, not in focus, not in focus, not in focus. And then I have to delete all the ones that aren't, definitely aren't in focus, and I have to go in between all the other ones that might be in focus, and then pick which ones I like best from there. It's a very frustrating process because sometimes you realize that out of 30 photos of the same insect, none of them are in focus, right? I've lost very good insects this way, but sometimes I get insects in focus by luck. This photo here is one of my very favorite photos for many reasons, but I actually was holding the camera with one hand, leaning over a bush, and snapping three quick photos before it flew away again. I was kind of following it around for 15, 20 minutes, and it landed just for a half a second, and I just reached my arm, I went click, 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 and I was like, there's no way I got one of those in focus, but I did, and it happened. And uh, to this day, is this is, I think, just an outstanding photo. Is it an award winner? No, but it's something that I took, and I'm proud of it, and I love it. And it was worth the hard work because this I took this over a year ago, and to this day, I still look at it, and I'm just like, yes! Yes! That being said, I told you I had to stalk around a bush for 15 minutes. When you're doing portrait photography, you don't have to do that. When you're taking landscapes, Landscapes are a little different because you have to get to location, right? You have to do all those things and and I'm a horrible landscape photographer Actually, I've almost never taken a good photo of something big um, Here's a couple from Iceland that I took that I kind of like um, But they're not even landscapes. So I you know I, Whatever right just whatever. I'm not good at it I need I've never been taught and I've tried to learn and every time I come home I, I think all my stuff is pretty mediocre. So we're just gonna kind of roll with it I'll stick to my bugs. So going back to like, you know, reaching over a bush, you have to sit in, in just these bug infested environments for long periods of time to, to get the shot that you need. These things do not sit still, right? Bees fly to flower to flower, so you have to get them when they land on the flower, not when they're, not when they're already there, because by the time you get there and you get in focus, you know, they're gonna leave. So you have to get really close, and you have to sit there, and you have to be patient. Butterflies, right? Butterflies are very skittish. Dragonflies, they're predatory, they fly around. Hornets, they're predatory, they fly around. They're not sitting on, you know, flowers, and, and, and they're not being patient for you to take their photograph. So most of the photographs that I have of these bugs, you know, I didn't just go outside for a hot second and take a quick shot of the bug on the first bush I found. No, I've had to walk around many bushes, many flowers for hours and, and you know, take a bunch of shots that I don't know if they're really in focus and I don't know if they're really still. And it's a long and frustrating process. I said earlier that you have to have a high shutter speed, but that's not always good enough. Because if your ISO is too high, you're gonna have a grainy image. So if you want a high shutter speed, you have to crank up the ISO, which means you're probably gonna need a better camera to get a good image. And then if you crank both of those up, you know, you also want a large depth of field. So shooting at a 2.8 isn't always advantageous, especially if your subject isn't perpendicular to the lens. What does that mean? You don't want a butterfly that is facing you because all of the wing 
is going to be blurry. I've taken a couple photos like this one that I really love, but it's not really your typical butterfly photo. So you have to get the right angle on the insects and that's really challenging. I kind of lucked out with this one as well. This is a photo of a, an assassin beetle. Um, I don't, you know, it's got a giant tooth in the front of its face and it's horrifying, but you can see how it's kind of like a part of the plant and it's just this giant monster and it's great. But I kind of got lucky with this image because the, the depth of field is so thin, I just happen to kind of get those facial features in the right location to make it a usable image. This is one of those images that I know isn't great, but it's good enough that I like it. <laughs> I like to look at it quite a bit because it's just such a weird looking insect. And that's another reason why I love taking photos of bugs. The things you capture, you don't capture in everyday life ever. It doesn't happen because your cell phone cannot take these photos. And now we cook. I know that I said earlier that I was going to cook and talk about bugs at the same time, but that is not really what ended up happening, and now I'm post-production editing this in so you can enjoy the movie. Bye-bye. Right, onion. Pepper. Just in it. Leftover onions. Leftover cauliflower. Pepper. Broccoli. Snap peas. Bok choy. And some sweet teriyaki tofu. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and all of those outside of the binary, this is going to be lit. Basically, it's a stir fry. And a cotton ball. Let's do it! For those of you that have the pleasure of not crying when you cut onions, go die, you suck. One of my favorite things my friend said to me, he's like, ah, oh, vegans are the worst. They eat all my food's food. <laughs> or vegans are the worst. They drink so much water. That's a fish's home. Throw it on the pan. Then you want to get quickly started on your peppers because onions and peppers take roughly the same amount of time to cook. I do this and then I wash them. So you clear out all the insides and when you wash them this time you can get rid of all the seeds. That's the way I do it. Long ways, long ways. Dice, dice. Boom, they're done. Throw them in the pan. <laughs> Don't throw this bit away, people. It's good. Okay, so I have the cauliflower in there now with the broccoli bits. And I put a little bit of water in the pan and now I'm going to steal it. But why, Anthony? Part of it is because not all the vegetables are gonna make contact with the bottom stove a whole lot because this is a pretty full, big pan. So that way the steam can kind of cook them on top. That's the way I do it. I have no idea if this is the best way. I should probably just get a bigger pan. So now I've got the tofu here. You're supposed to drain the tofu as much as possible. This tofu comes nice and pre kind of cut. Um, they say use paper towels, but I don't use paper towels ever because you never need paper towels. Fact of the day. If anybody has best practices for making tofu, I am all ears. I could just Google it, but you know, why would I do that? So I've added everything into the pot now, and the last thing that needs to be done is to get that broccoli out of the oven. Ha! Pan's hot. Threw a towel, the pan was hot. Get up on the plate. Take your trusty spatula. Give it one more. Give it one more good toss. And there you go. And on the side I have, bam. Get that white rice, boys. There we go. Leave a like if you like bugs. Leave a like if you hate bugs. How about that? Yeah. And don't, don't leave a dislike. Fun fact here, my, um, my pride video had a dislike on it. You know, it's, Nothing like some human rights to get people all fired up and angry with each other, right? See you next time. Hi, you've reached Anthony. Please leave a message after the beep. Thanks.